All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video today, we're gonna to talk about the meningeal coverings of the spinal cord. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I want you guys to think about here for a second, and when we're talking about the meninges of the spinal cord, let's say we take a clinical scenario, right? You have a patient coming in. They've been having a really bad headache, okay? They have a fever. They have some stiffness in their neck, okay? They've been having it for about two days. On top of that, they got some sensitivity to light and sounds. They're a little confused. You start thinking, hmm, I'm a really good ninja nerd, and I think that this patient may have meningitis. So what is gonna be the definitive diagnostic step to determine if that patient has meningitis? A lumbar puncture. You know what we need to know in order to perform a lumbar puncture? The general anatomy around the spinal cord, which includes those meninges and spaces here, okay? So, let's say that I wanna do a lumbar puncture, okay? If I wanna do a lumbar puncture, where am I gonna go? Well, the first thing that you have to know is where does the spinal cord end? We talked about this in our gross anatomy of the spinal cord and nerves. It ends around L1, L2. So I know that I don't wanna insert my spinal needle at around L1, L2 level. So the safe area to go ahead and insert your spinal needle in to get some of the cerebral spinal fluid is around L3, L4. So what am I gonna do? Am I just gonna count all the way down the vertebrae? No. So instead of counting all the way down, I'm gonna use my landmarks here. So what I'm gonna do is I have these bones, this bony kind of like ridge here. These are my iliac crests. Generally, if I take here and I kind of come from the midline, here's my iliac crest, here's my other iliac crest, and I stick my fingers along the midline of that, I'm gonna be around the L4 spinous process, okay? So I'm gonna take here, I'm gonna bring this in here, I'm at L4. Then I'm gonna hold that point there. There's my L4 spinous process. If I palpate above, that's my L3. When I stick my spinal needle in, I'm sticking it between these two vertebrae, okay, between that spinous processes. So again, use your landmarks, iliac crests, the top of them, come across the midline, I'm gonna bet L4, palpate above, L3, going in that space. All right, so now we know spinal cord ends at L2. We know that we're gonna insert our spinal needle in it between L3, L4. Okay, what I want us to do now is I want us to first cover all the structures, and we're gonna do this from deep to superficial, and then I'm gonna quiz you, and we're gonna go from superficial to deep, all the layers, to kind of get this into our noggins. So let's start here first. Here's our spinal cord. We're looking at a sagittal section. We're looking at this half, okay? First layer here in pink, what is that first layer here? This is called your pia mater, your pia mater. Pia kind of means kind of your soft. And mater is mother, so it's your soft mother. Kind of a weird thing to say, but that's, uh, that's what they wanted to call it, right? So pia mater, first inner layer there. Outside of that, you have this blue one. That's called our arachnoid mater. This is our arachnoid mater. Arachnoid, well arachnid means spider, oid means like, so it's spider-like mother. <laughs> well, again, a little weird, but again, that's the whole concept. Now, there's a space between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater, so between the blue and the and the uh, the pink there. What is that space called? Very important space. This is called our sub arachnoid space. Really important for you guys to know this one. Why? Because guess what's in the subarachnoid space? I'm gonna kind of follow this down here. Ooh, this is all right here where we're gonna be drawing our cerebral spinal fluid. So in the subarachnoid space is where that CSF is. That's what we need to extract. Okay, next layer, orange, I'm sorry, or red. So this next layer here, so we have pia, subarachnoid space, arachnoid mater, then we have the next one, which is going to be our dura mater, but this is the inner dura mater. So this is our inner dura mater. Now the inner dura mater is also called the meningeal layer of the dura mater. That's the other one I want you to remember. Meningeal layer of the dura mater. Then there's a space between the arachnoid mater, the blue tissue here, and the red tissue. What is this space here called? This space is called our subdural space. It's called our subdural space. All that's really in that subdural space is veins. There's some venous plexus within that space, okay? Then we go to the next one, this purple. So we went from our pia, subarachnoid, arachnoid, moderate, inner dura, subdural. Purple here is going to be our 
outer dura mater. So the purple is the outer layer of the dura mater. You know another name for that? The outer dura mater is also called the periosteal layer of the dura mater because it clings to the bone, that vertebral bone that it's going to be next to. Okay, then we have another space. This is a very important space, and it's also uh, something I want to make sure that we understand the difference between. So here we have our uh, inner dura mater and our outer dura mater. There's a space between those two. What's this space here called? This space is called the epidural space. Epidural space. Now the epidural space is very important for us to understand the difference here. In the brain, this is a potential space, it means it's kind of not really there. Whereas in the spinal cord, that is a real space. What is it filled with? It's filled with fat and veins. Okay, so there's some venous plexi and some fat in there. Now, we come to the next layer. Here we have this brown tissue here, right? This brown tissue. This brown tissue here is actually connecting the lamina of our vertebrae in these areas together from kind of superior, inferiorly, all of that, right? What is this brown layer here called? It's called the ligamentum, ligamentum flavum. Okay, so I want you to remember that layer there, ligamentum flavum. Okay, keep coming, but now we're gonna come down here past our spinal needle. Okay, we went the ligamentum flavum. Now we got this kind of blue lines here between the spinous processes. What is this called? This is called our interspinous ligament. So it's called our interspinous ligament. All right, sweet. So now let's move on to this next one. This next one here is actually gonna be this bluish color here, lighter blue and it's connecting the spinous process of one vertebrae to the spinous process, the tip of them, the tip of the spinous process to the other tip of the spinous process of a corresponding vertebrae. So this is called our supraspinous ligament. So this is our supraspinous ligament. Okay, then outside of that, we have this orange kind of tissue here. This is adipose tissue, and it's just beneath our skin. So this is called our subcutaneous tissue, filled with all that adipose. And the last one here, if we really wanted to kind of label it, you guys already know, what's just superficial to the subcutaneous tissue? That's our skin, right? Which is made up of our dermis and epidermis correspondingly, right? So that's going to be our skin, which is made up of the uh, dermis and epidermis. All right, so let's go ahead and test you guys' ability here, okay? What do we know? Spinal cord ends at L1, L2. I wanna go stick my spinal knee at L3, L4 interspace. How do I do that? Palpate the iliac crest, bring it to the midline. I'm at L4 spinous process. One more up is L3. That's where I'm gonna stick my needle. I sterilize the patient's skin area. I make sure it's a sterile field. I glove up, numb up the area, take my spinal needle, and I start inserting. As I start inserting, tell me the layers I'm going through. Ready? First layer here. I'm gonna go through his skin, okay? Then I'm gonna go through the subcutaneous tissue. Then I'm gonna go through the supraspinous ligament. Then I'm gonna go through the interspinous ligament. I'm gonna pop through my ligamentum flavum. Then, as I pop through the ligamentum flavum, I'll then pop through my dura mater, right? What's this purple layer? This is the outer dura mater layer. Then, I'm gonna pop through the space between the outer dura mater and inner dura mater. That's called the epidural space. Then I'm gonna pop through the inner dura mater layer, which is the meningeal layer. Then I'm gonna go through the space between the arachnoid mater and the inner dura mater. That's called my subdural space. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop through the arachnoid mater and guess where we are? We're in our subarachnoid space where all that cerebral spinal fluid is. So that's a really important thing to remember. Now generally, we have here another thing that we have to discuss. You see this tissue here, that pink tissue, that was our pia mater, right? There's an extension of the pia mater at the tip of the spinal cord, which is, what is this called? Our conus medullaris, right? And again, if to remind you guys, what is all those spinal nerves from L2 to about coccygeal one plexi? What is all those coming off the end of the spinal cord? That's our caudal equina. Running 
in that kind of cauda equina mess there is this little pia mater extension. And it comes from the tip of the spinal cord, goes all the way down here and attaches onto the coccyx. There's a special name for this pia mater extension that you have to know. Because what does this do? It's anchoring the spinal cord to the coccyx so that, that thing's not jostling around all over in that little space there. What is this tissue here called? This tissue is called the phylum terminal. So again, what is this tissue here called? It's called the phylum terminal. Beautiful. Okay. One other thing that I just want to add here is that this arachnoid mater, usually it's pretty close, in decent close proximity to the pia mater. But as you see from here, it starts to break away and creates this large space here. And that's where all that cerebrospinal fluid is sitting in this kind of like sac-like cistern area. The arachnoid mater actually continues down to about S2 level, okay, of the sacrum. Remember the sacrum is one bone, but it had the multiple transverse ridges. It used to be five individual bo bones. That arachnoid mater actually can extend down to about S2 level, okay? So, we know the layers here. One more thing that I have to add in is what's called denticulate ligament. So let's come over here and discuss that. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about here when we talk about these spinal cord kind of meningeal coverings here is we talked again, what is this first structure here called? This little pia mater extension coming from the tip of the spinal cord down to the coccyx, that's called our phylum terminal. But there's other pia mater extensions. So again, we have our pia mater here that's kind of clinging tight to the spinal cord. Then we have arachnoid, inner dura, outer dura, and then again, technically, we have that kind of ligamentum flavum structure there. But what I want you to know here is that the pia mater, what it'll do is it'll extend all the way out here, right? So it's going to come from its pia mater, it's going to extend all the way out here and kind of attach to the outer dura. And it forms these little ligaments here on both sides of the spinal cord. What are those ligaments, those little pia mater extensions coming off and connecting on the side? So again, this is a frontal view. This is a frontal view. So you're looking at both sides of the spinal cord, left side, right side of the spinal cord. These pia mater extensions that are coming off and extending all the way out to the dura mater and connecting with it are called denticulate ligaments. These are called your denticulate ligaments. And there is 21 pairs of these, 21 pairs of these denticulate ligaments. Okay, so now we should understand the basic anatomy of the meningeal coverings of the spinal cord, including the pia mater extensions, which are the phylum terminal and the denticulate ligaments. Hi, right, Nisner. So in this video, we talk about these spinal cord coverings or those meningeal coverings around that spinal cord. And we talk about its clinical relevance with respect to the lumbar puncture. I hope this video made sense. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, down in the description box, we'll have links to our Facebook, Instagram, Patreon account, all of that. You guys want to go check those out, comment. We appreciate it. All right, engineers, as always, we love you. And until next time.